Diesel engines, what is the big difference? They have a higher compression. They compress only air. They have a fuel injector and they squirt in the fuel right into the combustion chamber. It's not mixed air fuel brought in and then compressed. It's pure air brought in, compressed. The fuel injector squirts it in. As soon as it squirts it in, because of the high compression ratio, it's ready to burn. It starts combustion right away, but it's a slower burning diesel, you know? And so, um, basically, if you get like a 50 to one compression ratio engine, you can burn almost anything. And the military was always interested in those ultra high compression engines because if they ran over some enemy's fuel depot, they just grab it and throw it in their tank. It didn't matter if it's some liquid hydrocarbon, throw it in there, some cheap diesel, something kerosene, some jet fuel, and they could run with it. And so that was one of the great things about diesel engines. It used to be the dregs out of the, uh, out of the refinery, the junk that they didn't know what to do with, you know, the garbage, sell it real cheap. Anyway, the first stroke from one to two is the same. It's adiabatic compression. But instead of an auto cycle having heat addition at constant volume, indicating a very rapid combustion, they have heat addition at constant pressure. It starts to push the piston back as it's burning. So it's constant pressure heat addition, slower combustion. But then they cut off the fuel and then they have from three to four adiabatic expansion. But notice here you're expanding three to four from top dead to bottom dead. Here you're expanding from some cutoff down to bottom dead center. So it's a little more different, a little, little more tricky, a little different. The first process, one to two, and the last four to one are the same. All right, so that's the big difference. Make sure and plot it on a PV diagram. So pressure, volume. If you're going to be like a 20 to 1, you've got to be like half, and blah, blah, blah. Down, way down here, you go way high in pressure. And then constant pressure heat addition until you stop the fuel addition. Then go to the constant S isentropic expansion down to 4. So 1 to 2 to 3 to 4. That's what it looks like on a PV diagram. Right away, you, you're introduced to this specific volume of state three. It's not the same as the specific volume at state two. The specific volume at state one is equal to the specific volume at state four. Hey, what was our compression ratio? Wasn't that B1, uh, V1 divided by B2? Yeah. Here we have another ratio. It's called the cutoff. Cutoff ratio, R sub C. What is it defined as? It's defined as the specific volume at state three divided by the specific volume at state two. Typically, the compression ratio is around 20 for a, a diesel engine. The cutoff may be two or three or 1.5 for a diesel engine. All right. It's not like the cutoff is six or eight. It's not that big. All right. So that's the volume at the end of the heat addition in our states. That's volume state three divided by the smallest volume at top dead center, volume at state two. You need to be able to do the first second law analysis for the diesel cycle. The process one to two, no real difference, true? All right. But the process two to three was very different for the diesel. Let's go ahead and write the first law. Wasn't it U3 minus U2 is equal to Q2 to three minus work two to three? For the auto cycle, which one of these terms was zero? It was constant volume heat addition in the auto cycle. Was it Q equal to zero or W? W, okay, now we have constant pressure heat addition. Which one of these terms is zero clicker question? Last one for today. Is A equal to zero or is, I mean, Q is equal to zero? Answer A. Is work equal to zero? Answer B for the diesel. Or none? Answer C. This is for the process two to three. E to zero. W two to three. E to zero. Then let's jump back to this PV diagram right here. 
All right. Was there work from three to four? Was there work from three to four? Yes. Was it visually the area under the curve? Yes. All right. Is there area under the curve from two to three? What does that indicate about work from two to three? That it's that that's not zero. All right. Let's go back to the auto. The auto from two to three was a straight line up and down. Is there area under the curve from two to three? Nope. It's like, right? There's no work in the auto from two to three. So this is the big deal. This is the big difference. This is what I'll get questions from students, even to the, the, the couple days before the final exam in Thermo 2. They'll come to me and ask questions that are on this topic right now. So if I wanted to calculate the work two to three, could I calculate it by the integral PDV from state two to state three? Sure. Now, why could I pull out that P outside that integral? Because it's constant pressure. If I do that, is this equal to P times V3 minus V2? Yes. Yeah. Can I even express this as P3 V3 minus P2 V2 because P2 and P3 are the same? Yes. Sure. So if we put that in here for that, and then we flip it over to the other side, can I get U3 plus P3 V3 minus U2 plus P2 V2 equal to Q 2 to 3. So I know I'm doing a couple steps, but I'm throwing, putting it in and then taking it to the other side. Did that look okay? Uh, what's the definition of enthalpy? I didn't write that right. This is 3. H3 minus H2 is equal to Q 2 to 3. That's because we have constant pressure boundary work for the process two to three. Students are like, oh, why do we have U's here and H's there? That's not an easy question to answer. I mean, it depends on what are we studying, which process and which cycle. And then, then the next one is by approximate constant specific heats. It's C sub P, T3 minus T2, isn't it? Equal to Q, two to three. And then the student remembers, oh, that's for the diesel cycle. What was it for the auto cycle? Q2 to 3 is equal to C sub V, T3 minus T2. Again, what student is going to come up and ask me right before the final exam? Hey, why, why is the CP there and not CV? Or why is the CV there and not the CP? It's because, one, you have the, con the boundary work during the diesel cycle. All right. All right. So that's a big headache right there. The last one, though, is the compression ratio. And I'm not, I think I have enough time. Let's go back and do it here. So if I need to, to, to calculate um, T3 divided by T4 is equal to, what is it? Um, v, V4 divided by V3 to the... K minus 1. Remember that relationship for isentropic process? And then I look at it for a minute and I say, hmm, V4 over V3. V4 over V3. If I put a V2 here and a V2 there, I can replace V4, V4 over V3 is equal to what is 4 divided by 2? compression ratio, what is 3 divided by 2? Cutoff ratio. So don't forget when you have the diesel cycle, you're trying to go from the temperature at 3 to temperature at 4, that you don't just use R, you use this R divided by R sub C. That makes sense? Those are the trickiest points in the diesel cycle analysis. I'm going to stop here. Thank you for your attention. I do have your exams. I'm going to pass them back as well as some uh, portfolios.